Now let's take a quick look at absolute positioning, and I'm going to show you one gotcha that you'll have to watch with it. But with absolute positioning, we're going to tell it exactly where to put something based on the top left corner of the object. So notice we have a display block here, and then we've turned the background steel blue. So if we open this up, we see that we have two steel blue blocks. Now if I come in here and set positioning or position to absolute and save this and run it, you'll notice that I only see matte. Well, what's happening is, is both of them are on top of each other. So what I'll have to do here is somehow differentiate between these two. And I want to show you real quickly a little trick that you can do. I can put a class attribute and I'll put, call that one one, and I'll put a class attribute on this husband tag. and call that 2. Now, notice what I can do here. I can say husband.1 and then I'll just copy every bit of this and put husband.2. Now, if I run this, I need to save both of these. And if you look at it, still on top of it. So what we need to do is put some positioning in here for these two. And so let's do that. On the first one, let's put left at 0 px. Then let's put the uh, top at 0 px. Now notice something that's happened. These things weren't defaulting to 0 and 0, so I'll actually see a little piece of the other one. Notice the husband 1 jumped to 0 zero and this one stayed at the default which is probably like five five or something like that so if I come down here now and set top on this one to about say 20 and then put the left at say we'll say 80 that might be too far we'll go look at it save this and run it you will now notice that we can see both of them. And so let me move it down just a bit. Let's say top 60. Save it. And notice we're absolutely positioning our two boxes wherever we want them to be. So let's take this up to about 80 and let's take this to like 95. Save that and notice what we've got. Now it's going to start to look a little better. Okay, so now we're starting to make things look like they're in front of each other. Well, what if we want to change the way this looks? We can use the Z order to determine how these things are going to appear. And we use the Z index to do that. And we're going to change the Z order of these things. So let's go up to up here and we're going to call the Z index. And we're going to set this one to zero. Then I'll just copy this to save you the torture of watching me type and we'll set this one at 1. Okay, so we'll save this, call it up again. Notice Matt's, the box of Matt is on top, so let's switch these now and notice what we get. You see what's coming? You'll notice now this one's on top, so we can change the Z index to make it appear that one window or one block or rectangle is on top of the other. Now something else is real interesting, now that we have these, notice we've got two separate things here. I can change this steel blue, and we'll choose the color maroon, and save this, and now we can see them with two different colors, with Z index set and so forth. So you see you can start to get pretty elaborate with even graphics, some very simple graphics on your web page. So that is basically absolute positioning. We can put these things anywhere we like them. You will have to differentiate between your various elements and we use the class attribute to do that. And then we just notated which class we were referring to with the dot notation on our cascading style sheet. So again, let me direct you out to some digging a little deeper on your own in a cascading style sheets book, but you see the kind of power you have with cascading style sheets. Understand though, this is just formatting. We haven't 
transformed any of this data or been any very picky about which of this data we use. We've just simply formatted the data that's there, but obviously this looks much better than just raw XML for our users.